Welcome to the Decipher Podcast. I'm Dennis Fisher. I'm here with my colleague, Lindsay O'Donnell Welch. We're going to talk a little bit about the Lockbit disruption that was just announced today uh, by the Department of Justice, Europol, the UK's National Crime Agency. I think that's it. Maybe one or two other uh, law enforcement agencies. These things tend to be very big international operations, which this one certainly was. Um, Lindsay, we were talking before we started recording about how I said this was the first thing that I saw this morning when I woke up and, you know, opened my phone and and I just kind of started laughing. And you were like, oh, yeah, this this just makes me way too happy. So um, (laughs) it's nice to have a little good news on on a Monday morning. I think so. Yeah. I, you know, there had been rumblings of it yesterday because I think they had posted a message on their, um, their leak site or something and people on Twitter just started like the Twitter detectives and the um, yeah. set community were like, this is happening. I think someone yeah. tweeted, this is like the Super Bowl for like ransomware analysts. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's very happy about this news and like the, as you mentioned before, like the coordination between different law enforcement and countries, um, you know, really speaks to just how widespread this this entire operation is. Yeah, I mean, Lockbit isn't the oldest ransomware by any stretch of the imagination. I think it started, I don't know if it was during the pandemic, but it was around that time, maybe 2021, something like that, where it really started ramping up. Um And you started hearing more and more about it. And they were pretty notorious for kind of going after any target. It didn't, they didn't really discriminate. I mean, they went after, you know, critical infrastructure, telcos, manufacturing, financial services. I think some government agencies here in the U.S., some small, small businesses, you know, that Mm -hmm. typically don't have the resources to pay any significant ransom, um, so they, it was definitely one of the noisier and more brazen operations. Uh, it's it's always hard to like get a handle on how big something like this is because they're so sort of fluid. You know, any ransomware as a service operation has you know the central office and then all the sort of uh, satellites, the, the the affiliates that do the actual um, you know initial access and deploying the ransomware. So. I don't really have a great handle on it, but what they, what the law enforcement announced today was pretty amazing. They seized, I think you said 200 um, crypto accounts. They mm-hmm. took down the the control panel that affiliates use to to log in, and essentially seized all the infrastructure that that Lockbit used, um, yeah. kind of the whole ball game, and announced a couple of indictments against two Russian nationals too. Yeah, yeah, indictments. Um, they made like I think it was like. Um, arrest warrants. They actually made two arrests too, um, you know, for one individual in Poland and one in Ukraine, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's, they definitely were going way further than just like a disruption operation. Like this is widespreading and it's hitting at kind of the heart of these ransomware groups, which is like the actors themselves, you know? Um, So it's, it's really, really good to see. And when I was reading the releases, you know, they had a couple different ones from Europol and from the Justice Department, but it was really interesting to see kind of all the different aspects of the infrastructure that they hit, um, the technical infrastructure. And, you know, I think they said it was 14,000 accounts that were used for exfiltration that they had taken down um, their leak site on the dark web, which was more yeah kind of the front facing visible piece of all this. Right. Um, and then, you know, just the, like the servers themselves. So it was really cool to see like that, all the different pieces that they need to target when they carry out these operations. And like you said, Dennis, this is, it's hard to get a grip on how widespread uh, Lockbit is with its affiliates and mm-hmm. kind of the, the infrastructure and how all these different moving pieces um, play out. But I think reading that those announcements, it really gives you kind of a sense of just how how big it is, really. Yeah, and it's 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 nice to see the cooperation among the the various national law enforcement agencies because that's not always how these things play out. Um, mm-hmm. More recently, it has there have been quite a few operations that involved you know the FBI, Europol, NCA, other. Um, other international law enforcement agencies. But, you know, those groups don't always play well together. But on something like this, it's nice to see that they did. um, Because you, 
you talked about an operation of this size. It's not something that one group can probably uh, take down on its own, uh, especially when you're when you're dealing with actors that are in countries such as Russia that are not going to those people are not being extradited. And it, everyone knows that. But, um, you know, yeah. trying to get that that level of cooperation takes time. Um, but it's it's great to see. And they, I don't think we mentioned, but they also released a decryptor tool. Um, so any victim that is still, you know, sort of affected by Lockbit can there's an email address or I'm sorry, a URL that that those companies can go to and law enforcement will see if they can help them out with the decryptor tool, which is great, too, because um, those a lot of times you hear about a company that gets hit and then you move on. You hear about another company, another company, and maybe they pay the ransom. Maybe they don't. But there's pro probably still like hundreds of companies out there that have some form of lockbit on their networks that they've just, you know, if they didn't pay the ransom, they're probably still stuck. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a good point for sure. And yeah, that's available now and like no more ransom. And um, that was just kind of like the icing on the cake of this announcement to me, yeah. just that, you know, a tangible tool to be able to really um, deal with that. So, um, but I think that your point about, you know, no country being able to do this alone was, was a really good one because if you look at Lockbit, like that was, you know, I think in 2023, it was like the most active ransomware group and, yeah. um, it really has been a game changer in the ransomware space, um, with a lot of the different tactics they've used, like, um, triple extortion for trying to get people to pay and using all these kind of dirty tricks. Um, so there, there were a couple of really um, interesting techniques that they used to really um, change the game for, for ransomware. And, um, you know, I, I think it, we, it's just important to over like to state like how big Lockbit is, I guess, in the ransomware yeah. sphere. Um, it's like one of the biggest ones. So I know. And it's in the DOJ's announcement, they mentioned the two Russian nationals that they indicted as operators, but I don't think I didn't get the sense that they were um, they were saying that those two men were the creators or you know the authors of Lockbit in any way. I'm not sure if you did. I, I haven't seen anything like that um, said. I think I, it's probably really difficult to even know who creates something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But this is also there were other people charged uh, DOJ, I think last fall, or maybe it was 2022 charged at least one other person with lock associated with Lockbit. Um, so it's definitely yeah. something that at least U S authorities have been following very closely and mm -hmm. keeping an eye on. So yeah, I, I did always get the sense that it was a matter of time for them. Cause they seem to be one, you know, really brazen and very sort of out there and bragging about their exploits. Like a lot of these groups do, but Mm -hmm. It seems like DOJ made them a kind of special project, which is not what you want. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, was it like recently they like had hit like a children's hospital in Colorado. Yeah. So that just goes to show yeah. like exactly how brazen they are. And Subway, like the sandwich chain. I mean, what are, come on. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're messing with the chicken bacon ranch sandwich, then things have yeah. gone sideways. Come on. <laughs> it's not good. But yeah, if I was a Lockbit affiliate, I think I would be pretty scared right now so yeah i mean it's hard to know whether it's authentic but there's a, a screenshot that's making the rounds on twitter and elsewhere that that shows what's supposed to be the the screen that law enforcement left on the lockbit affiliate login panel that essentially says hey we'll be in touch real soon don't worry about it also have a nice day i hope it's real i don't know if it is i, I really hope it is but it's, it's so great that's yeah just so like so sassy i love it it's just a, a nice little touch um yeah. <laughs> I, I truly hope it's real but who knows but um it's not it's it's a good thing to to see this and i mean we've seen i don't know I, it's hard to even remember i don't know let's say five five six seven of these kind of ransomware disruptions over the last few years in various forms sometimes they're able to take down you know some servers or arrest a couple affiliates or something like that but this, I think, is the most wide, widespread is not the right word, but the most comprehensive disruption uh, that that I can remember of a, of a ransomware group. So mm -hmm. I think it, it does sort of demonstrate kind of a, 
maturation of the capabilities, uh, possibly for the law enforcement agencies and just how well they're able to, to trace the actors in their activities now. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. There was, like you said, like they hit it all. So yeah. um, I'm really curious to see where where this goes and you know one thing that they've had a lot of trouble with um when dealing with ransomware is understanding or being able to better measure like how much of an impact these types of operations and disruptions and takedowns have so i'm hoping yeah. that in the future we can with something that is as comprehensive as this we can see where that goes and have a better sense of like hitting all of these different things like how well that's going to impact ransomware um as a whole ransomware attacks as a whole so that's still to be seen though yeah i like it let's put the fear of god into these people and you know um make them hopefully stay up at night worrying about you know when the knock on the door is coming from europol or the fbi um i like to see it so yep. all right thanks Lindsay. good to talk awesome. to you all right thanks take so care thanks bye